that has changed shape. Cyrano, as in Cyrano de Bergerac, well, traditionally you think about a bloke with a large schnoz, do you not? But they've reimagined this, and they've reimagined it for very good reason, because the writer of this one and the director of this one is the wife of the star. And the star is a little person. So no longer does Cyrano de Bergerac in the movie Cyrano have a large nose, but he is a little person. Peter Dinklage plays him. So let's go back in history. Savian de Cyrano de Bergerac was a French novelist, playwright and duelist, as in attending duels, who lived in the early to mid 17th century. His life was fictionalised in a play written by Edmund Rostand in 1897. The theatrical adaptation drew attention to his big nose, the Bergeracs. That was also the focus, if you pardon the pun, of the 1987 movie featuring Steve Martin and the 1990 film with Gerard Depardieu. Now, more than three decades later, as I said, de Bergerac's been reimagined as a little person. He falls in love with a beautiful and intelligent young woman, played by Hayley Bennett, who grew up in the same town as him. De Bergerac's stature does not hold him back from anything other than coming out and telling the lady, Roxanne, how he feels about her. He's not afraid to speak his mind. He's a master swordsman and he's a member of the King's Guard. He's also a most witty and incisive poet. Roxanne is being courted by the powerful Duke, played by Ben Mendelssohn, a man that she is not the slightest bit interested in. But then she spots a new recruit to the guards, the handsome Christian, played by Kelvin Harrison Jr. She's immediately smitten. So is he. Roxanne tells de Bergerac of her interest and asks de Bergerac to ask Christian to write to her. Only, while Christian may be good with his fists, when it comes to wooing a woman, he is all at sea. So it is that with Roxanne requesting de Bergerac look out for Christian, de Bergerac pens letters to Roxanne, completely winning her over with his turn of phrase. Things are set to get a lot hairier, though, after Christian and Roxanne meet, and Christian turns out not to be the wordsmith that he appears to be on paper. Once again, de Bergerac comes to the rescue. And such is the case, too, when Christian and de Bergerac are both sent off to war on the front line by the vindictive Duke. The questions are, will Roxanne ever learn the truth, and will true love without? Cyrano Circa 2022 is a romantic and dramatic musical, Peter Krauss. It certainly is, and it's interesting that it's based on a stage musical that's been adapted to film. Uh, and I think what Joe Wright has done is to turn this into a very fluid, smoothly directed film. And and what is also so interesting is the, the actual songs and music that are integrated into the dialogue. And, and it's also worth noting Peter Dinklage, who is probably not the greatest singer, his sort of spoken word singing uh, is actually very well integrated into the film. And Hayley Bennett, of course, sings beautifully. And Ben Mendelsohn also does a pretty good job uh, in the songs that he has. And I just wished he had replaced uh, Russell Crowe in Les Miserables. But <laughs> that's another story. Anyway, I was very impressed by uh, Cyrano. Uh, it, it, it's very touching. It's uh, beautifully directed. Uh, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, likewise. I mean, Erica Schmidt, who wrote it, good on her. I mean, fantastic. I, I, um, I thought it was fantastic. I, and and I, I made the mistake that she, she has written it. And as you say, Joe Wright, who was responsible for, among other movies, Atonement, is the director. The score is by Bryce and Aaron Dresner, Matt Berninger and Karen Besser. I, I also, like you, Peter, was particularly taken by Dinklage's resolute representation of de Bergerac. He's in a turmoil, Dave, written all over his face. He, he's particularly expressive, I thought, throughout, and his eyes speak wonders. He's got a great speaking voice too, doesn't he? He does, and I found this to be a really interesting film to review because I didn't like the first half of the film, I'll be honest, but I loved the second half. I found that the 
the first half to me kind of felt like the film couldn't find its pace um, early on. But then I loved the second half where it felt like Joe Wright's kind of darker filmmaking came to the light. I, I really, really liked what they did with Peter Dinklage's um, vocals in the second part as well. It kind of took on a Nick Cave-esque kind of feel as well with his um, vocals. There was little bits though that I did have issues with um, throughout, and I'm surprised that 30, 40 years on, those problems are still there. I've always had an issue with the fact that Roxanne picks up on Cyrano's voice in a crowded theatre at the start of this film, but then doesn't pick his voice later on when he's talking to her um, in the balcony scene. I've always had an issue with that, and I've always thought somebody needs to try and sort that out. But look, at the end of the day, I did enjoy this. I just thought it struggled a little bit for the first half of the film. But she does pick him up later about the balcony scene because she mentions that in this movie. Yeah, but why not say that at the time? Why go along with... And as, as uh, my co-host said the other day, basically it's catfishing that's happening here. Why not say that earlier? Mm. Well, it is a movie after all. I thought Bennett made for a charming, if starry-eyed Roxanne, and uh, Kelvin Harrison Jr., Greg ensures we're in no doubt that Christian is way out of his depth in trying to engage with Roxanne, doesn't he? He does indeed. But I still remember fondly the um, Steve Martin version, Roxanne, um, there, which I loved there. Um, this one's reimagined the familiar tale, and as Peter and you have said, it's turned it into a bit of a... Um, theatrical musical there. Um, I, I, I thought Peter Dinklage did a really good job there um, of expressing Cyrano's emotions there and his, his conflict played out on his face there. Um, some of the musical numbers, I thought, were a little bit bland. Um, ben Mendelsohn did a good job as the villain of the piece here there. But a couple of scenes stood out for me that showed how good a filmmaker Joe Wright is. That battleground scene in which the soldiers sing a mournful dirge as they march into battle, and the sweeping, swirling cameras there re remind me a little bit of the DJ scene from Wright's own early atonement there, and the scene in which the guards dance was, I thought, really well choreographed and stood out for me, and those two scenes really stood out for me in this film. So, um, I'm with Dave a little bit. I, I thought it was called while to get going, but it certainly picked up pace and was quite a moving um, little drama. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, I, I agree. I think Mendelssohn played the Duke as, as suitably arrogant and entitled, and uh, Bashir Salahuddin comes across as sympathetic as de Bergerac's superior officer and friend, Le Brett. I, I thought it was really easy to warm to musically. I, I really enjoyed it immensely, and I, I, as you know, watch a lot of musicals uh, live as well as on film. Settings are really picturesque. The movie was shot in stunning locales in Italy, and the production design, well, that's a major feature. It really is a story with heart uh, that I enjoyed watching. Peter, score out of 10 for Cyrano, which runs for 123 minutes and is rated M. Yes, I, I very much like the film, and uh, Peter Dinklage has got an Oscar nomination for his role, so well done to him. Uh, I give the film 8 out of 10. Mm -hmm. And Greg King? Uh, 7 out of 10 for me. Dave Griffiths. I'm giving it 6 out of 10, and I have to ask, are we ever going to see Ben Mendelsohn play another role where he's not the villain? I've loved him as an actor ever since I saw him in David Caesar's Idiot Box all those years ago, but is he ever going to get a role in Hollywood that's not a villain? Well, I, I suppose that's typecasting, isn't it? Uh, you, you could argue that, and I know that he's capable of much more than that, and he's shown that in the past. I'm giving Cyrano a 7.5 out of 10 as well, so there we go.